Okay, welcome back everybody. Um, so let's get into it right away. The different variation of the product is basically you form this. It's kind of like a book being f uh, faced um, face down on, on the table or something like that. And you form this. Okay, so you form a little bridge. Okay, and the bridge it consists of the atoms that are not in can in conjugation so you see this atom is this atom is this carbon atom is this carbon atom the two carbon atoms that are not in conjugation is basically this one right here this one right here and this one right here and that's what's going to form the bridge okay you still form your double bond here and it's still the same thing, it just it forms a different variation. And basically, if you could just think about it three dimensionally, um, this piece right here, this little piece right here, it kind of just basically flips upwards. And that's where you have it right here, it just flips upwards. And this is still the same thing. So let's label the atoms here. You have one right there, you have two, you have three, four, five, and six. Okay, we'll label it again. Here's carbon one. Here's two, three, four, right? Here's five up top, right here. This one right here. And here's your sixth one right here. Here's seven. Here's eight. Here's seven. Here's eight. Nothing different. Everything is the same thing. Don't try to make it more confusing than it has to be, okay? It follows the same mechanism I've described here up top. Okay, so now let's look at a uh, an, an example of what I have explained so far alright so an example okay so let's say we have this uh, this dying right here right let's just say we have an, uh, a methyl group hanging off of it actually let's put a a phenyl group, a pH stands for a phenyl or for those of you who are not familiar with that it's basically um, is basically um, an aromatic ring, referring to an aromatic ring that's hanging off of it, and that falls into the category of alkyl groups. And so, your diene ophile, right? This is this alkyl group, right? It's an alkyl group, and it's inductive effect, so it makes this a little bit more reactive and stable. Now, this reacts with this diene ophile that has this ketone as such and another ketone here's an H here's an H okay so recall I think back to your first semester of organic chemistry where you guys uh, were uh, were taught um, cis and trans when you're dealing with an al uh, alkenes so we're dealing with an alkene right here which is the dienophile um, this substituent and this substituent are trans to one another so remember in the mechanism I showed that the the stereochemistry remains the same so in our product it also has to remain trans so since our diene is uh, not in a cyclic ring it does not uh, form this new variation this thing it doesn't do this it forms the regular one like this only when you have a cyclic diene does it form this. So now this reacts, right? It forms the six membered ring, right? Um, you have your pH group right there, your phenyl group. Um, you have your double bond there, right? And now you have these two groups. Well, they're gonna both of them, uh, one of them is gonna be here, and the other one's gonna be here. Well, they're trans to one another, so you have to show stereochemistry here and show one as how am I do this? Okay, kind of looks weird, but being trans to one another, and that's how you do it, basically. This is an example of a deals in all the reaction, follows the same mechanism. If you want to draw the arrows, attacks that carbon, attacks that carbon, 
like that. It's nice and simple. No no tricks and turns to this. Looks like I got one more um, one more <clears throat> one more example before I end this uh, topic on deals and all the reactions. So we have this dying that's in conjugation and it's in a ring. Sorry for the weird looking double bond there. And let's put a one, two, three, propyl group right there. And let's put a isopropyl group right there. Okay. And this reacts with, let's just say, um, this dienophile that has an ester and a ketone that are trans to one another. I mean, sorry, sorry, excuse me, that are cis to one another. Okay, so again, now this is going to form the, the variation, this type of product, because again, the diene is in, is in a cyclic ring. The diene is in a cyclic ring, so it's going to form that variation. So, the product of this is going to be, again, imagine a book being faced flat on a bench and then you have to form the bridge right these are not in the system of conjugation so these are going to form the bridge right you still have your double bond there right let's draw the isopropyl and propyl group right there's our, our two groups and we need to draw this and this these two substituents but now how do we draw these two substituents in this very in this form of the product well there's if you think back to your again to your first semester of organic chemistry you guys must have talked about the chair conformation of cyclohexane and um, the equatorial and axial positions so it kind of falls into the same category now in this case we have the indo and exo positions the indo is kind of like the equatorial position because it is more stable and it does not much strain in that position. The axial is kind of like the exo position because if you r recall the axial position is where you get one three diaxial strain so think of it like that. So the endo position so since they're cis these two will definitely go in the endo position similar to the chair conformation where they will go in the equatorial position where because it's more stable so the endo position is straight down Right, there's our ketone and there's our ester and then the exo position is basically here looks something like that it's not really okay so these lines these this bond and this bond has to almost be parallel to this bond right here Okay, mine's a little bit off, and I apologize for that. But that's so this exo position where these hydrogens are at, these two, uh, this ketone and this ester is in the endo position. In the exo position, the substituents, the big substituents, kind of interact with the bridge and they, it causes strain. So that's why you want to put them in the endo position because it's more favored, there's less stress. Okay, and that's it. This is basically your deals and all the reaction. I hope you guys learned a lot. If you have any questions, please uh, feel free to leave a comment. Or if you have any requests about topics you want to be discussed, again, uh, please feel free to uh, leave a message or a comment. Thank you, and I hope you guys enjoyed.